32-year-old James Shelby is a healthy young man, but that hasn't always been the case. As a four-year-old, James had a cancerous kidney removed. One of the treatment agents he received turned out to have harmful side effects and is no longer used. The cancer was cured, but it caused a, an internal, I want to say, domino effect on both my heart and my kidney. Besides having breathing difficulties that he blamed on asthma, James enjoyed a normal childhood. But the perilous condition of his health became apparent during college. A few months after he passed out, going up a flight of stairs, doctors told James that both his heart and remaining kidney were failing. He would need new organs to survive. A 22-year-old boy hearing that at the prime of his life, I, I just started crying. Waiting in the hospital, watching news, hearing about accidents and deaths, and it's not, it's not the kind of life you want to want to look forward to, because you know something else happens outside. That could be your chance at life. After waiting nearly five months, James received a donated heart and kidney from a 16-year-old girl who died in a traffic accident. I've had a successful and a blessed, thank God, um, almost 10 years, nine years of, of a healthier, better, more satisfying, more fulfilling life because of my organ transplants. But others aren't as fortunate. Every day, 17 people die nationwide waiting for donor organs. It's so important for people to donate. There's probably 96,000 people on the national waiting list waiting for an organ. Most of them are waiting for kidneys, but all of them are awaiting life-saving organs. Just about anyone can be a potential organ and tissue donor. A person can become an organ donor by completing an organ donation card and carrying it in their wallet. Many states offer people who are applying for new or renewed driver's licenses the opportunity to make the decision regarding organ donation and have it recorded on the driver's license. Almost all the states now have registries or they have a driver's license program. While working at the Washington Regional Transplant Consortium, Lori sees strong emotional bonds form between the relatives of organ donors and their recipients. You know, we had this one woman, she came to meet her recipient. Um, it was probably a couple years after her son died. And the very first thing she wanted to do was lay her head on the chest of the man who got her son's heart. You know, so she could listen to her, heart's, her son's heart beating. You know, life really does go on. Since his successful organ transplants, James has been very busy. He's planning his wedding with his fiance and working at the National Institutes of Health. Well, since my transplants, I've done a, a lot of things. I, um, I finished a bachelor's degree, finished a master's degree, and I'm now working on my last year, my PhD, healthcare administration. I speak um, on this particular topic all throughout the country. When he finishes work on his PhD, James intends to move back to his hometown of Norfolk, Virginia, where he hopes to create a center calling attention to the critical need for organ donation. James would like to inspire others to save lives through organ donation.